Hey everyone, today for cooking class we're going to be making sugar cookies, the perfect cookie to make during the holiday season. In the next several slides I've listed the instructions, ingredients, and supplies needed for both the cookies and the icing. Please feel free to pause the video to write down everything you'll need or come back to the slides as needed. The first thing I'm going to do is preheat my oven to 375 degrees. While the oven is heating, I'm going to go ahead and make the cookie dough. Into my bowl, I'm going to add 1 and 1 3rd cups flour, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Now I'm going to stir it until all the ingredients are mixed thoroughly. Once that's done, set the dry ingredients aside. Now I'm going to cream the butter and sugar. You'll need to leave the butter out at room temperature until it's soft enough to press in with a spoon like I just did. I'm going to add 3 quarters of a cup of sugar to the half cup of butter. I'm now going to cream the butter and sugar. It's another way of saying mixing it until it's blended smooth. Once that's mixed, I'm going to go ahead and add one egg. And a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm going to mix these ingredients in thoroughly. Once it's mixed, I can go ahead and start adding my dry ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and add about a third of the flour mixture from earlier. You only want to add a little bit of the flour mixture at a time because it makes the dough easier to mix. And you want to begin mixing it slowly so the flour doesn't spill everywhere. Once the flour is mixed in, you can go ahead and add some more. And again, when the flour is all mixed in, you can go ahead and add the rest of it. Now that the dough is ready, we can get our cookie sheet ready. I'm going to go ahead and use parchment paper for this, and I'm going to measure it out to the size of my cookie sheet and rip off a piece. If you don't have parchment paper, that's okay. You can spread a thin layer of butter on the bottom of the cookie sheet. Now I'm going to use my hands and get some dough to roll into a ball. I'm going to do my best to try to make them teaspoon sized. It doesn't really matter what size you make the dough balls, you just want to make sure that all the balls are similar in size. This will make sure they all cook the same. I'm going to be making three rows of four dough balls each, so there's 12 total cookies on my sheet. I 
I still have some cookie dough left in my bowl, so this means I'll be baking a second batch. But now it's time to put these cookies in the oven. Now that my oven is preheated, I'm going to open the door and carefully slide my cookies into the oven. You want to be careful not to touch the oven rack or any part inside the oven because it's really hot. Now I'm going to set my timer for 8 minutes. These cookies will take somewhere between 8 and 10 minutes to cook. It's important to stay in the kitchen while your cookies are baking. Once my timer goes off, I'm going to check to see if my cookies are a golden brown. Since my cookies aren't a golden brown, I'm going to set my timer for two more minutes and then check the cookies again. When the two minutes are up, I'm going to go ahead and check my cookies. And since it looks like they're a golden brown, I'm going to carefully pull them out of the oven with an oven mitt. I'm going to set the cookie sheet on the stove and let them cool for two minutes before transferring them to the cooling rack. Now I'm going to use my spatula to carefully transfer them to the cooling rack. Some of my cookies bake together and that's okay. I'm going to use my spatula to gently cut them apart. And now for the second batch of cookies, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did for the first batch. And once again, when the cookies are done, I'm going to take them out and let them cool for two minutes before transferring them to the cooling rack. Since all my cookies are baked, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the oven. Once the cookies have cooled a little, I'm going to transfer them to the cooling rack. The cookies need to cool completely before I add the icing. And while the cookies are cooling, I'm going to go ahead and make the icing. Into my bowl, I'm going to add a cup of powdered sugar, four teaspoons of milk, two teaspoons of light corn syrup, As you can see, this stuff is pretty sticky, so you might need to use your finger to help get it out of the measuring spoon. The last thing I'm going to add is a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm going to mix it until it's all smooth. I'm going to start stirring slowly because I don't want the powdered sugar to spill everywhere. Looking at the consistency, it's looking a little thin, so I think I'm going to add some more powdered sugar. If your icing is looking too thin, you can add some more powdered sugar, or if it's looking too thick, you could add some more milk. It's now dripping slowly off the spoon, which is what I'm looking for. I'm going to be coloring my icing into three different colors today, so I'm going to divide the icing into three small Pyrex cups. Coloring your icing is optional. You could go ahead and start covering your cookies with the white icing as it is. If you do want to color your icing and you're using multiple colors, you want to make sure to separate the icing into separate bowls. You don't want the icing colors to mix. I'm coloring my icing into three different colors today, but you could color your icing into more colors or fewer colors, whatever you like.
Since I'm making three colors of icing, I'm going to pull out three different spoons. I'm going to use one spoon per icing so I don't mix up the colors. For each icing, I'm going to add about four to five drops of food coloring each. I'm going to be making red, blue, and green icing today, but you can make whichever colors you'd like. Once I've got my food coloring into my icing, I'm going to mix them up. Now I'm going to get a paper plate to do my decorating on. This is an easy way to contain any of the mess from icing and sprinkles. I'm going to add some sprinkles to some of my cookies today, but you don't have to add sprinkles if you don't want to. So to ice the cookie, I'm going to put some of the icing on the cookie with my spoon, and then use the back of the spoon to spread it out smooth. Once you've spread the icing out, if you're not going to add sprinkles, you can go ahead and add it to the cooling rack to dry. But if you're going to add sprinkles, you can go ahead and add them now. And there's the whole process of how to ice your cookies. I'm going to be repeating this process for all the cookies I baked today. I'm going to put my wire rack on top of some tin foil, or you could also use wax paper. This will catch any icing that may drip off the cookies and help avoid a mess. Once all my cookies are iced and decorated, I'm going to let the icing dry and harden up. And here's the finished plate of delicious sugar cookies. I hope you enjoy making and eating your own sugar cookies. Thanks for watching!